Kelly. So I'm here at Stoutfield Elementary with Mr. Gillum and his class that have been studying density. And I think you're really gonna like this. Check it out. All right. So we're here at Southfield Elementary and my fifth graders have been learning about density. Now we've known for a while that it has to do with mass and volume. And one of the things we've learned is that if it has more volume, then it's gonna float. And if it has more mass, then it's gonna sink. And so that's the things that we have learned here at fifth grade. And today we're testing Coke and Diet Coke to see whether or not it floats. So you guys have come up with a question. And what question are you guys trying to answer with this experiment? Why does Diet Coke, why does Diet Coke float? Right, so we know that's our question. And so what do you guys think? Like, what's your hypothesis? If Diet Coke does float, then why does it float? What's the hypothesis? So if um, Diet Coke has less added ingredients, then it will float. Ah, so we think if it has less added ingredients, then it will float. Do you guys think uh, Coke will sink? Yes. You guys think Coke will sink? All right, so tell us, what are you guys going to do when you guys get to this experiment? What are you guys going to do with the Coke and the Diet Coke? We're going to add sugar into the Diet Coke because the Coke has more sugar than the Diet Coke. So we think that if we add sugar into the Coke, then it will sink and um, because the Coke has more sugar than the Diet Coke. So let's test it first though. Let's see if Diet Coke actually does flow. You want to put that in there? <laughs> What's it doing, guys? Floating. 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 All right. Let's go ahead and take it out and try the Coke. What's it doing? Floating. floating. Kind of it's floating. Down there. All right. So this is the Coke and it's it's sinking, guys. So the Diet Coke floated and the Coke sinked. And Brooklyn, I saw that you wanted. Um, so tell us about this one. What did you guys do to these bags? Tell me a little bit more about that that you wanted to test. Um, we thought because the Coke has um, more sugar than the Diet Coke that we would add the same amount of sugar that the Coke has into the Diet Coke and then the Diet Coke would sink. So you guys added how much sugar? Do you remember that number? 39 grams. So you guys added 39 grams of sugar. And when you guys put it in there, uh, which one's the Coke and the uh, Diet Coke? This is Coke, that's Diet Coke. This is Diet Coke, okay, with the zipper. Let's see what happens to Diet Coke when we stick it in there. So we're gonna drop it in there. This is their experiment. Now, it should sink and it goes below the water. So even though the bag is above it, it's catching on, but it looks like the Diet Coke is now sinking. So is your hypothesis correct? Yes. Ah. So what were you guys adding when you added sugar? Were you adding mass or volume? Mass. Mass. So we increased the mass and then it sunk. So it's supporting our idea. So I have a fun question. What happens if you guys try to get me to float? Or what would you need to know about me in order to float? I mean, I guess you say, okay. What would I need to know? What are the two things I would you would need to know about me? Your volume. My volume and my mass. mass. Well, I'll tell you my mass, but let's go ahead and try to figure out my volume. And we figure out volume two ways. One, if I was a rectangular prism, I could take my three dimensions and multiply them together. But am I a rectangular prism? No. So I have to do it through something called displacement. So based on this rule is if I go into this trash can filled with water, then the amount of water I display should be equal to my volume. So we're going to try that. All right. To measure my volume, we filled this trash can up. Wait, as we hold the water up to show that it's actually running. We filled the water up with the trash can. And what we've done is we've, we've put this little valve on here and so when water rises, it comes out this hole. And my students here are gonna be collecting it inside of these bins. So when I step in, the amount of water I displace should come inside those containers. Now those containers, can I see your container? It's marked with one liter. So as it comes up to one liter, Brooklyn's gonna hold it up and you guys are gonna yell, one! And then Ada's gonna do it, two! And we're gonna keep circling through. Now guys, remember, when you do this, you gotta dump your water out and come back in line, okay? All right, so today we're gonna try to figure out my volume by me getting inside of this giant trash can. All right, so now I'm gonna get in and we're gonna see how cold this is, but also see what my volume is. So here we go, I'm gonna do one leg at a time, guys. I need you to count. Are you ready? All the right, one leg is going in. I'm gonna go in slow so we can keep, make sure, catch that line. So you can see now the water's being displaced and coming out of the tube into the container. We got one, one. one. You guys gotta count for me. Okay. 
Stop. Two. Three. I got one leg in. Kayla, write it down. Three. All right, here's my other leg. Three. Uh, that's three. All right, here we go. Woo. This is really cool, guys. Four. Keep going. Slow down a little bit. Six. Six. Seven. Seven. Eight. Eight. Quick, quick, quick. Nine. Nine. Ten. All right, eleven. I am going for my torso. Twelve. Thirteen. I'm gonna slow down a minute. I'm gonna slow down a minute. Let the water catch up. 14. Keep going. Keep going. The amount of water on the sidewalk. 15. 16. 17. Good job. Good transfer. 18. I'm slowly going in. Twenty. Twenty. Twenty-one. Good job, guys. Twenty-two. One. Almost there. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. What? Leaders. <laughs> Twenty-four. Twenty-five! Twenty-six! Twenty-seven! Twenty I'm about halfway up a little past my belly button. Twenty-eight! All right, I'm coming up to my chest. 29! Nine. Keep counting, guys. 30! 30. 35 meters! 36 meters! 50 meters! 51 meters! 55 liters! Keep counting. Looks like you're up to your neck in density. <laughs> yes, I am. 56 liters! Good job, guys. We're at 56 liters. That's my volume. 57 liters! Pay attention. Here we go. I'm going to have to take my head under in a moment. 58 liters! <laughs> 59 liters! <laughs> 60 liters. Almost, almost. Five liters. All right, I'm as far as I go. So I gotta go under. So you guys keep counting and I'm gonna hold my breath as long as I can. I want you, Jerson, to tap me on the head when I can come back up, okay? All right, you ready? Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. I'm going under. You guys keep counting. 66 yeah. liters. Ready? You got it. Go. <laughs> okay, okay. 67 liters. You want to get ready? 68 liters! Get ready, get ready. I thought that's what you were. 69 liters! Wow, I think about 70 liters. At a, that's, uh, what do you think about that? I, I think 70 liters is great because it's really cold. So, guys, we just found my volume. So now we're going to find my density and see whether or not I float, well, obviously I don't. Um, so we're gonna use that to figure out my density and see whether or not we can use Diet Coke to make me float. Good job, guys. Before we finish our calculations, I need to dry off. We have to help find my density. Now we just found my volume. I'm still wet, I'm still in my swim trunks, I'm still cold. Um, but we're gonna find my breeze, my mass, and my volume to figure out my density. So here's what we need to do. First of all, 
I need you guys to help me remember. How do we find density? There are two things we need. What are they? The same. Mass and volume. And how do I find the density of something? What do I do? Uh, Brooklyn, what do you do? Divide mass and volume or mass divided by volume? Which one? Mass divided by volume. So guys, write this on your paper. I'm going to put M, which stands for mass, divided by volume. And so we use this to find density. And the, and the density we measure up to all times is water. Does anybody remember what the density of water is? One. Just say it. What is it? One. one. Yes, it's one gram per milliliter or one kilogram per liter. So when we used our bottles here, the density of water was for one liter, the mass would be one kilogram, which is a ratio of one to one. So that makes it one. And so that's why we measure density against water because things that float have less density than water and things that sink have what? More, more density than water. They have a higher density. I wouldn't say they have more, but a higher density. Okay. So I realized I made one mistake. When I talk about the density of water, it's actually one gram per cubic centimeter, not one gram per, per, per cubic milliliter. That would be one milligram per cubic or per milliliter. So it's one gram per cubic centimeter. And I weighed exactly 100, it's probably about 184 pounds, it's like 184.6 pounds. But we're not talking about pounds, we're talking about kilograms. So I needed to convert it. And when I converted it, I took my weight in pounds times, I think it was 0.454 to, to come up with this answer of 84 kilograms. Well, actually it was like 83.39 something, but I went ahead and rounded up. So my mass is 84 kilograms. So what we'll want to do for our thing with milliliters or whatever is just understand that a kilogram, that's 1,000 grams. So if I wanted to turn 10 kilograms into grams, how, how many grams would 10 kilograms be? 10,000. 10,000. Nice job. Go ahead and fill it in. So if I'm 84 kilograms, how many grams is that? 84,000. 84,000. Nice job. 84,000 grams is how much I have. So when I look at this paper, 84 kilograms or 84,000 grams, but then we started measuring my volume. We were measuring it in liters, and I, I, you guys counted to 70, right? 70 liters. But Mr. Gilliam, we lost, we lost a lot of water. Like how much water do you guys think that we lost? Five I mean, that's a, a, a variable we don't know. Five liters. You think five liters? Mm -hmm. So my volume could be anywhere from 70 to possibly 75 liters. Is that what you guys are yeah. saying? Yeah. yeah. So we have a variable there because not all of that water got caught. As hard as we tried, you guys still miss some. So um, we're going to give our total volume, and we're going to give it as kind of like an approximate volume, as close as we can get it. So what do you guys want to say? We think we lost about five liters of water, five of those containers. So we want to say 75 liters is my volume. All right. So 75 liters is my volume. Go ahead and put that down inside of your paper. And so now we know two things. We know my mass and my volume. My mass is 84 kilograms. My volume, what's my volume again? 84. No, my volume is 75 liters. liters. Very good. So according to what you guys told me a minute ago, if I take my mass 84 divided by my liter 75. But I want to explain to you guys why we don't divide by 75,000 milliliters. So we don't use grams. We're not going to use grams, and there's a very important reason. Because one liter is equal to, well, how many milliliters do you think one liter equals? I showed you on that little container back there. What? 1,000. 1,000, right. So just like the kilogram is 1,000 grams, the liter is 1,000 milliliters. So we want to use liters and kilograms together because they are the same type of unit. They are the same unit. They are both worth 1,000 grams or 1,000 milliliters. So we're going to take 84, which is my what? What was 84? No, by total what? Was it my mass or my volume? Mass. And we're going to divide that by my volume. And what was my volume? 75. 75. OK. So we're going to try to solve this. We're going to try to figure this out. And this one's kind of easy. I want you guys to do me a favor. I want you to put a decimal here at the end. And let's just stick some zeros on the end here. OK. And this is where the math comes into science. 
Look at those first two digits. How many times does 75 go into 84? One. one time. Okay, so we're going to say one time. So I'm going to put up here one time and my decimal up and multiply out. And I get nine. nine. Well, actually, I could bring down my zeros and I could go into 900. Can I go ahead and pause it for just a second? So we did the division, and my density is 1.12 or 1 and 12 hundredths. That's my ratio of mass to volume. So it's bigger than one, which means do I float or do I sink? Sink. Sink, right. Because we compare all densities to water, which is one, to decide whether or not something floats or sinks. And so therefore, I sunk, and I definitely sunk inside of that trash can. And so you guys are going to now take the next step of figuring out, OK, we know Mr. Game's volume. We know Mr. Game's mass. We know his density. Now can we make them float using Diet Coke? And that's what we're going to be designing uh, for a big chunk of today. And we're going to go test it. All right, we're over here at Lenhurst 7th and 8th grade center. And we're going to test some things out. But let's kind of recap what we've done so far. First, we found my volume by dumping me in a giant, really cold trash can and found out that I displaced 75 liters of water. So my volume was 75 liters. Then we tested Coke and Diet Coke to see whether or not they float, kind of like this. See, we tested the Coke and we dropped the Coke in and it should sink, like so. We tested the Diet Coke and it should float like so. So now I think it's time for a daringly diet density demonstration. What do you think? Let's give it a try. So I brought some tape and some Diet Coke and it's gonna take me a little while to get this strapped to me for my Diet Coke suit. I got my legs done but I think I need less density or my head's gonna sink and my legs are gonna float. Let's add some more. We got my legs done, we got my arms done, now all I got left is my chest and my back. I'm all taped up, but I'm dieting to get in this pool. But first, I gotta stand up. Woo, let's do this. All right. I can't believe I'm doing this, but it's in the name of science, so let's go for it. Well, it kind of works. Hey, who knew? I can float. Woo! The things we do for science, density rules, or it floats. 